It's story time. Let's listen to the name jar, authored by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Gun He looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Unhe's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Unhe had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. And she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the current characters. She pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Unhe. Surprising her, Unhe looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Unhe answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Unhe said, Unhe. Unhe, the girl asked, scratching up her face. Oh, oh, une, some kids chanted. No, no, Unhe corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Unhe. Oh, it's Unhe, the boy said. Like, Unhe. What about Hey You? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school, and the doors opened. Unhe hurried to get off. You hey, bye bye. The kids yelled as she left. Unhe felt herself blush. Unhe stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked the curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Unhe nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Coco Toast, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Coco Toast thanked him and greeted Unhe. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Unhe smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Unhe 
picture the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Coco told, showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Unhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Unhe? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Unhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will, replied Unhe. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with a surprise. Why? Un has a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Un had complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Unhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Unhe just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Unhe and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fidel's falafel, Tony's pizza, and Dot's deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to King's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi Korean style spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed on his favorite for soup and made on his smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Unhe. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Unhe nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Unhet, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Unhet nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Unhet. That evening, 
Eun Hye stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. The next morning, when Unhe arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhe took one out and read it aloud, Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Unhead took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Unhead nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday. Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over on his face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like, or pick them all, and you will have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Unhe looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. One head turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Unhe thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Onhe said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus.
Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and Un had read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in," Marco told her at snack time. "I put in three more," said Ralph. "Madison, Park, and Lex—they're my favorite street names." Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name," Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. "That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws?" "Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we?" Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Unhe got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, "To my Unhe, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends." Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there, the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you will always be my unhe, your grandma. Forever. Unhe took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Unhe walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. "Hi, Unhe." "Hello, Mr. Kim." Unhe replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey," said the customer, turning around. "It was Joey. Your name is Unhe." He asked her with his eyes wide open. Unhe looked quickly at Mr. Kim and then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. "Yes, it's pronounced Unhe, and it means grace." Mr. Kim added. On her, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly, it made on her smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow," said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, on her. Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him. Why he was at the store? On Monday, Unhe came to class early to look at the names one last time. But 
the drawing wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Un had slipped in her pocket. Where's your name, Charles? Ralph asked. As soon as he saw it was gone, I don't know. Un had said, it was on Mr. Kokoto's desk, or on any other desk, and it was on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotos came in, and Ralph shouted at him, "The name jar is gone. The jar with all the names in it." Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Unhe, "Did you get a chance to read all the names?" Unhe nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself," she said. Unhe wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me," she told the class. But I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Unhe means grace. Grace, grace, Unhe shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. On he, on he, on he. On he said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Un Hae's choice. I was named after a flower. Rosie whispered to Unhe. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Unhe heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Unhe. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Unhe. Unhe said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Unhe, Unhe, come downstairs! Mother called up to Unhe. Your friend is here. Unhe rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? Asked Unhe breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir. One head said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. 
Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some creative names in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that. A great unhand. I've already got a creative nickname. Joey said, "Mr. Kim, help me choose it." Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with a beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad. And then, on the piece of paper next to her name, Chingu read on her. That means friend. And Chingu smiled back.